The liberal agenda has taken over. Oh, that's not take good. these guys at PTR Radio Just Look at Two fat guys, and someone who thinks he's a freaking monkey. The end is near, folks. And now back to just a great podcast. I mean, really great bunch of guys, just the biggest and best stars on the podcast scene. And now back to PTR Radio with Mike the Ape Man, Shaggy and Colin. These three guys should really come with a warning label, maybe like for rectal use only. Feel my body and drink my wine. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of PTR Radio here on the fabulous Intar Web. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, you know, we survived, for the most part, a studio rewire. You know? Now it's not 100% done, but it's uh, it, it's getting there. You know? Don't have all the bells and whistles that we want so far, but, you know, it's uh, it's getting close. And and not only okay. not only did I rewire the studio, not only did I move things around, Mike, but I replaced the video card in the main machine, which also necessitated changing the cooler on the processor. Because did you know there's about almost two inches of difference in the depth of from a 1070 Ti to a 3070? There's a, there's enough of a difference that the case almost didn't fit. So I had to change the radiator out, and uh, yeah, a, 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 a lot of changes. See, and then I then I moved it from one side of the one side of the room to the other. Ran all new cables. No, c congratulations, congratulations for not going ahead and swapping out the motherboard, memory processor, and everything else. Oh, you know, while you're in. I did think about changing the memory, uh, but I didn't, uh, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I just changed almost everything else. My, mic my microphone arm just decided it wanted to, it didn't want to be in that spot anymore. It, so. it wanted to lay down and take a nap. <laughs> so. Lord. so, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so now, let's see here, so. The machine is now over there. That's uh, too far. It's it, no, it's a perfect. It's perfect, you know, perfect. So, you know, now everything is now everything is is over there, out of the way, and the sound is a little bit further away. So, you know, that's good. Oh well, okay, that's fair. Yep. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this down and have more desk space, and I've got my got my Mac up and running. So, you know, so we got, so we got Mac stuff now. So, you know, Mac stuff is Mac tolerable. Mac, Mac stuff is, th is stuff. It, it's, it's, it's slightly tolerable. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's coming along. It's coming along. I gotta, I gotta still move the server that's over there on the other side of the monitors over there and. Um, you know, do that, do that kind of stuff. And I, um, I did screw up though. I went to put a USB hub and, uh, a, uh, Xbox, uh, dongle in the other room in my, my family room. Cause the idea is that then I'll be able to play games in the family room on the big TV from my computer. Uh, which was one of the reasons why I needed to move it to that wall. And, uh, um, I kind of plugged in the wrong power supply to the USB hub. So instead of sending like nine volts, sent in 48. Um, which kind of, well, it, it smelled smoky for a bit. And the fan, but the good news is the fan that I had hooked up to that USB hub to keep some things cool, it went really fast for a short amount of time. That's actually what told me I had the wrong power supply plugged in. But, yes. Um, so, not only did I burn out the USB hub, uh, but I burned out my Xbox adapter. <laughs> Luckily, that's all that burned out. That's good. So, 
Uh, just so you know, Shaggy, when you were doing that, your camera really didn't like you waving your your arm and pointing out to the side there. So, ah, okay. So just. Well, you know, there are there are things still to be worked on. Um, so, anyway, but uh, but yeah, so we've we've got we've got new things to go, new things to do. So. But hopefully everything will get much, much better. I've got, I've got replacement hubs on the way. I've got replacement, you know, other things on the way. The other thing I, that I, uh, I did, did a slight miscalculation on. Uh, so I bought a, uh, an HDMI matrix so that I could control all the different monitors that I have and I could switch them out between computers, you know, and, and play musical monitors. I didn't realize how many... Um, HDMI inputs I really needed, so I okay. had to buy, had so a four by four wasn't enough. So, got a got a new one in the mail today. Eight by eight. Everybody needs one of those for their home office. <laughs> I, you know, at this point, like my one monitor has two inputs, right? So, like mm -hmm. two HDMI or an HDMI and a display port. So in theory, I could share it between machines. Mm -hmm. However, that would also imply that I would then have a third screen available for me while I'm working. And I don't care about my job that much to go through the effort to try and make that happen. See, uh, I, I had, I, I grew from two screens to three, then to four. And now I'm finding, okay, you know what? There's benefits to having just a separate machine for the fourth screen. So then I'm thinking, okay, well, I could do six main screens up top oh, and then one off to the God. side. Listen to, and listen to me, Tank. Think of, think of the productivity you could have and the neck cramps. Uh, so, yeah. Well, I think, I think what would happen if you, you know, got that new headset from apple next year and then you could have look stupid all the different displays you want all I the way around could, could look stupid yeah no no if i if i pay thirty five hundred dollars for a pair of ski goggles um somebody can just come and kick my ass all right so yeah, here's the, the thing. funny thing instead of but instead of that you could spend 800 on two 42 inch curved displays just put them top and bottom and there you go you pretty much got the panoramic anyway yeah and i just saved see, the money the, that you can give to me see but the math is different in apple world well you know, yeah you can say it's thirty five hundred dollars well yes that is cheaper than an apple monitor yeah <laughs> that's true it's cheaper than a fully specced out mac <laughs> so you know yeah it is kind of cheap at twice the price so but oh god so jonathan gators oh okay writing in um mac stuff is overpriced stuff yep more volts equals more better and more screens equal better yeah well i guess i mean sometimes extent, it depends on what you're doing like like i said if I'm going to put through the effort to try and create or, or try and have multiple screens and more real estate, it, it's going to be for my own personal use. And since Dirt 5 is never going to have steering wheel support, I don't need the extra screens anymore. <laughs> I would just say wider monitor is better than more monitors. No, no, I, I, I disagree. I disagree entirely. I don't disagree entirely, but I do see a purpose for multiple monitors if one is actually portrait. I've no. come to appreciate the ability to rotate 90 degrees and be able to display entire pages of documents see, on the screen. See, I'm a snapper. So I snap to, you know, like I, I will still take my three screens and I will half snap you know i'll have one screen where i have it snapped half in outlook and half in teams 
and then my main monitor is I'll have it full screen on whatever I'm working on then the other monitor well maybe that's you know half notepad and half something else so and you can't do that kind of you know yeah, you can. snapping I, 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 sure. no I, Windows is good at it uh, I, I don't know so, and, and Gator is also because, now saying that go ahead because when I go into the office which I have to do twice a week and I have to use two monitors instead of my one super wide monitor. It's just hell. Because my, one of my major things that I do is this thing called a, uh, a code review of a pull request. Mm -hmm. And when I can fill in an entire screen with the entire application and the display of, of the change stuff, and it's all one big display with no plastic bezel in the middle interrupting stuff. It's just wonderful. And then when I get to have to do the work, it's like it's like it's like trying to do my work while staring through a little like a through a plastic pipe instead of my super super ultra wide monitor. So so Mike, you said that Dirt Five doesn't support wheels? Listen, do not get me started on this. It only supports a handful of wheels, and I'm not spending $300 on a new wheel just to play a game that I bought for $20. That's Apple math, goddammit, and it's not going to happen in this household. Well, but it's not like you could only play this game with a new wheel. No, stop, stop. Listen to me. I mean, what about WRX9? You know, you could play that. Or I, don't maybe... want, I don't need realistic. I want fun. I don't uh, – and Dirt 5 has ha, – I look, I've already beaten it, all right? I'm waiting for the damn expansion packs to go on – or the year one upgrade to go on sale through <laughs> Steam because I'm not going to pay more for the year one upgrade pack that has all of the expansions, which, by the way, since EA bought Codemasters, they're not going to do anything else. So any content that's been released, that's it. There's no more. There's no more upgrade, nothing. I'm not going to spend twice as much on the upgrade pack as I did on the game. And I beat the game with the controller. So, uh, so Gators writes in here, says, what you really need is more speakers. You haven't lived until you learned what your ceiling tastes like from installing ceiling speakers. No, I've, sir. I've done that. <laughs> I've done that. I have done that. I have snaked wires through walls and tasted asbestos. Mm -hmm. I have, which, by the way, tequila... Yummy is the drink of choice to get rid of that taste from your mouth. Just an FYI. And I'm not even talking the good stuff. I'm saying the cheap shit. Yeah. Because you want that burn. In a plastic bottle. Um, I, I have been in my attic in, when it's 120 degrees up there wearing full long sleeves because damned if I want to get fiberglass all on my damn arms and yeah. what have you. Um, Speakers, see now ceiling speakers. I I don't know. I have a love hate relationship with ceiling speakers. I have a love hate relationship with ceiling everything. Yeah, not ceiling fans. Lo just love them. Love ceiling fans. No, yeah. I have a love hate with them as well. Be when because if you have many animals in your house, as some people I know do, um, ceiling fans that are constantly running. When you turn them off, you realize, son of a bitch. When it, you ever seen a ceiling fan that's been running for about a week and a half straight? Oh, yeah, yeah. Finally yeah. get turned off. And Mine run 24-7. Yeah. Um, yeah, turn it off and see what happens. You look oh, yeah. at the edge and you're like, um, I don't remember the cat living up there. <laughs> and yeah, that's why. You and just... then you go to clean it and the dust goes everywhere. Yeah, that's why you need the, the there's a vacuum thing that just has a, it's a big oval. And you hook it up to the vacuum and then you. Then you run it over the blades, and then you don't have to worry about that. I went and bought a new stick vacuum because I, you know, yeah. a new beater bar. But so I have a love hate relationship with ceiling fans for that very reason as well. Yep. Yeah. Um, the only reason I like ceilings is this? because it keeps stuff off of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand that. I just, uh, you know, I, uh, yeah, I've been in too many of them, I guess. But uh, ceilings are better than crawl spaces. 
Ceilings are better than crawl spaces. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. I like it. Crawl spaces is the part of the tr uh, part of the house you don't really know, want, want to know what it looks like. It's better outside. Yeah. Well, so. the okay. So just to be a uh, uh, point of clarification, because the the property up in Maine, the one they're 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 both manufactured houses, right? One okay. The old one is is a trailer. That's just on jacks. So the crawl space under that is on dirt. And I will not go near that ever. Uh, the closest I'll get to it is looking. Yeah. <laughs> the manufactured house, the crawl space, the, it's actually the entire house is on a concrete pad. Mm -hmm. So I will go on into that crawl space. I don't have a problem with that because it's wide open. It's concrete. It's not dirty. It's dry. Nothing lives there. Yeah. I once lived so in a house that was, was, was dirt, and mm -hmm. if you went down there, you discovered that part of the house was being supported on top of breeze blocks. It had a breeze block foundation. So I was like, no, no just don't, don't go down there. You don't want to know. No, no. That, that, that's, you, you do that, and you realize, I, 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 I can't live here now. Um, I can't unsee this, so... Oh, we didn't. Yeah, gotta move. There's other reasons. Uh, Shaggy, was that a, is that a Uncle Linus LTT bottle you're drinking out of? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Uncle yeah, Linus yeah. is 100% potato moonshine. Yep. Yep. Really? Yeah. Yep. That's that. I have uh, Mike. He, Okay, so we've talked before about my fascination with uh, soda, right? And and, mm -hmm. and uh, an unhealthy relationship with soda. So my you are the only person I know, I've ever known, that did a cost analysis and came close to break even on installing a soda gun in his house. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, and Colin. You, Colin's well familiar with my soda intake as well because we used to buy about the same amount, uh, you know, multiple three liter bottles <laughs> when we worked two downtown. Liter, two liter bottles. So that's, yeah, we uh, we would fill up uh, Shaggy's car and uh, take it back to work with us and fill up the cabinets with it. Yep. Yep. So uh, <laughs> so I figured uh, I figured I was going through last month. I was averaging probably two two liters a day. All right. That that was about my my intake, uh, so so anywhere between on these because uh, these these uh, sixteen point nine fluid ounce bottles, I was going through about a dozen of those a day or better. What? All right, depending upon the day. Uh, sometimes more, usually more, never less than a dozen a day. All right. So guess how many I am at right, about a month ago, my doctor, uh, you know, told me that I really did need to cut back uh, on these and that, they, you know, because not only was my weight going up, but my A1C was in the wrong direction and, and everything. And uh, so not that these have much sugar in them, but they can affect you a little bit. So uh, so guess how many of these I am at now per day? Two. two to three, depending upon the day and how tired I am. I am down to two of these a day, which I, I went and saw the doctor uh, on uh, on Friday. He was shocked and befuddled. <laughs> He's like, wait a second, you, you made that drastic of a change in a month? And I'm like, well, yeah, that's, you know. I'm like, don't get me wrong. I am drinking a ton of, like, crystal light stuff. Uh, which, you know, I'm not sure that it's a ton better for me, but you wanted me to get rid of the caffeine. So I got rid of well, the caffeine. Is that regular Mountain Dew or diet Mountain Dew? That was diet. Diet Mountain Dew. Have you always drank diet Mountain Dew? Uh, no. When I first started, it was regular, but okay. I, for the, about the last, uh, I don't know, 15 years, it's been diet. Okay. So 15 years of a dozen yeah. diet Mountain Dews per day. Yeah. 
Well, you except realize for, that your your DNA probably looks like Gumby by now. Except for except for the uh, the few months that I was into their energy drink, when I was drinking their Amp Zero, uh, which oh, was well, okay, Amp you Zero. Know. So <laughs> yeah, you you, I don't think there is any human DNA left in you now, Shaggy, <laughs> it's, it's, based on all the sucralose that ha, you've. You've you've taken well, if, over. If, if nothing else, I've I've done the rat testing for humanity. You know, well, yeah, those those rats you, who got a thousand times the normal amount of aspartame, I've taken care of that for humanity, and proven that it's uh, you know it's fine. And so. look, I'm guilty too, because I'm sure, you know, for the longest time, we it was Splenda in my coffee. And this was back when I was drinking 14 cups of coffee a day. So 14 packets of Splenda. Mm -hmm. um, then I started cutting back on that. And then we do Stevia. So, but now I drink my coffee black, which apparently means I'm a psychopath, according to the people <laughs> I work with. Well, you know. But you're black not coffee. And I, compl and I complain if it's, if it's not if strong it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> This is not bitter. What the hell? <laughs> what is it? What what what's in this? What, what what did you do? Oh, that's the breakfast blend. No, coffee is not a breakfast drink. It's an all day drink. <laughs> a, I need the all day blend. <laughs> Give me the bitterness. Give me that extreme caffeine mix from Quick Check. Come on give, now. Give give me the the Black Rifle or Black Death or whatever mix. Uh, so I finally unfollowed Death Wish Coffee on Instagram because they're starting to, they were starting to make me angry like The Rock when it comes to Instagram. Like you're, <laughs> you're posting all the stuff that I don't want to see, and yeah. they they never respond to me about the fact that they would do hockey jerseys every every other year or so, but they would never release one in a goalie cut. So mm. the biggest you could get is a double XL, which is not the same thing. I right. argued with their their Twitter about this. I said, I am an actual. I drink your coffee. I actually play hockey. I would get you pictures of me wearing this in a game situation, but you don't make them. Yeah, oh, we I make mean, a double XL that should fit. It doesn't. I mean, do they not want a picture of you holding the Stanley Cup with their shirt on? I mean, didn't you didn't our you bring that up to them? Well, our Stanley Cup is beer cans duct taped together. But still, but. You know, <sighs> I don't. Well, that, I guess I'm just not. I'm not attractive enough to endorse their product. So I said, "The hell with you. I'm not going to follow you anymore." Well, I, you know, I have had a uh, similar experience with it, with some brands uh, to that. But I will tell you what the 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 cider place in upstate New York complete opposite experience. So not only have or that you know that I the three brothers cidery that I get my hard cider from. Not only did they reach out to me going, hey, we know uh, that you are a, uh, a purveyor of our products. Uh, we wanted to let you know that, you know, next week we're coming out with a new one and we think you might like it. And by the way, we also got your favorite one back in stock again. Uh, so think about putting an order together soon. So ain't nothing about sponsoring PTR radio. So no, no, not yet. Not yet. I'm working on it, though. I'm working on it, uh, you know. So, uh, you know, so, and of course my wife's like, well, I don't know what to get you for Father's Day, so put together an order. And I'm like, well, I don't think you understand. Uh, this is much more than a Father's Day gift order. <laughs> I'm like, I did put the order together. I just haven't put the order button yet because it's $300. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I did get 30% off. So, you know, that's after 30% and free shipping. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of cider. It's it's quite a bit. It's probably that's another eight eight boxes. So, you know. Okay. But other other things in in the world are moving along. So I finally, after what seems like forever, got some construction companies to call me back about putting an addition onto the house, which I'm very happy about. So all that COVID construction must be uh, tapering off, and people are finally willing to return phone calls. So I got one company that came out. I got another company coming out uh, next week. 
to tell me the art of the possible. But, uh, you know, so far, so good. Pretty happy. I even got a, uh, let me show you guys, a uh, an idea about what I'm doing. And you guys can tell me what, what you think. See if you think this is a good uh, a good potential floor plan. So this is what I'm looking at uh, adding on to the back of the house. So you've got a little uh, room here for, you know, my wife's new library area. Basically 10 foot by 24 foot. It's a pretty big library. Yeah. And then... Um, then you you then we are putting in a half bath uh, for for visitors on the main floor to use because as my wife said she doesn't want to share her bathroom with nobody else. I uh, guess I, I, I have I already have a question. So okay, so what's the twenty foot? So this is master bedroom area for ah. the, the bed and the uh, you know dressers and and whatnot. Uh, okay. I wanted a bedroom yeah. large enough for me to put a recliner in here because I hate bedrooms that are only big enough for your bed and maybe one or two dressers. I want okay, a, so you, a sanctuary. You are essentially – and where – where the important question to me, mm -hmm. where in relation to all of this is the kitchen? It is right here. So right now on the other side of where this nine-foot opening is, that's the dining room. And then on the other side of the, the bathrooms here, this is the kitchen. Okay. So you are about, you know, 15 feet away from kitchen. So when you want that late night snack, no problems. Okay. So there's no way to put a door. See, nah, I, I'm just thinking if, you, if there was access directly from the bedroom, through your bathroom or what have you into the kitchen, then essentially you've built yourself an in-law suite in your own house. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But I, I like this where, you know, apart from needing some place to, to cook, uh, you know, you have everything here because I'm also relocating the laundry to the master walk-in closet. Which is a very interesting concept. Well, I... Because right now it's on the other side of the wall. It, it, we have a so – so the kitchen goes to about where the toilet is in the new master bath. Uh, and then there is a very small little cubby pantry for my wife's pantry. But <clears throat> it is way too small for everything that she has and wants. So then we have a laundry room on the back side of the kitchen. But my thought is it's a pain in the butt. Because it's too small, really, to be a laundry room. And, well, it's, it's still far away from where the bedrooms are, and it's just me and her. So why don't we put the laundry where the laundry goes? So put the laundry in the closet. <laughs> then you don't have to worry about it. You, your dirty clothes go there. Your clean clothes go there. You Wash them, dry them, hang them up. There's no moving laundry all around the damn house. So the other thing I'd say is if you're going to do that, then consider uh, switching the doors around. What, you don't want to be able to go from your bathroom into your closet to get dressed? Well, if somebody else is in there doing laundry and, like, somebody else is visiting, like, let's say one of your uh, stepsons is there and – they're in the laundry room, too, and you need to use the toilet, then they're going to be locked in there while you're using the there, toilet. That, it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. Or, or if that's the case, I can always use the half bath outside. Yeah, it just, yes, what if you're already there? It just, then they can wait five minutes for me to be done. It's, okay. <laughs> I thought about putting another door in. Yeah. A door no, 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 you don't come to my house to do your laundry. Stuff. How dare you? Yeah, you got coins? Go to the laundromat. <laughs> so There's a hose and a washboard out back. Go, <laughs> go ahead. No, I, I'm not saying they're using the laundry. I'm like, you know, if you have, you know, one of the nephews or grandsons or whatever, and they're trying to help grandma do 
laundry. I don't think it would happen often enough, but I did think about putting in another door right about here. You know, that that way you could get to it either through the through the bathroom or through the laundry room direct. But uh you know, I don't know. Uh, that's something I can talk to the contractor about. But the Here's important part do. is big shower, no tub in the master, because tubs are dumb in the master. So here's what you do. You turn that door into a barn door. Like a barn door. That yeah. There's one opening, and either you're closing the closet or you're closing the bathroom. Yeah. I've thought about that, too. And then Chip and Joanna door. would love that idea. Yeah, as except for I'm not sure that I always want to. As long as there's looking. shiplap on one of these walls. Oh, I love that shiplap idea. is probably going to have to go on this wall. She's already said that she wants it because she wants it as the backdrop to her bed. So, uh, but anyway, yeah. So what I'm looking at is where do I put TVs, you know? <laughs> that's what I'm worried about. I'm like, where do I put TVs? Where do I put dressers? Uh, you know, <laughs> where do I need well, Ethernet jacks? Where do I need outlets? <laughs> yeah, so. I, and, you know, actually, you bring up a very interesting point. You may have to reorient your shower, at least put the shower head on the other wall. Oh, there's going to be. Because you don't want it. There's well, going to be multiple the, shower heads, so. Okay, but you don't want plumbing on that one little piece of wall where you have the shower head because, in reality, that is where your TV is going to mount. It definitely could, but as long as I do the mounting on this wall here, and, you know, then it's just an... Because it would be an angled TV anyway. Yeah. So... If this, I I would be curious to see what size you'd be able to mount without going in front of that door. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's going to be a barn door probably. So. So yeah. Or you move, or move the door closer to the shower. Yeah, the other mounted on the other wall. Other this thing, way, you'd be angling it away from the window and not get glare from the win from the window. Yeah, true, because if you put the bed this way and you put the TV here, then you're going to get glare from this window and this window. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's definitely issues. But what I liked was the idea was, was solid because I kind of came up with, uh, you know, the, the drawing a little bit on my own, and I'm definitely no architect. So, yep. yeah. But those are, um, those are north-facing windows. No, those are west facing windows. So it would be at the afternoon and evening sunlight would be coming in. I was thinking of the windows on the back wall, not the Yeah, they side. they would be west facing windows. Okay. So, yep. But anyway, so it was you know Supposedly going to get some idea or get some people to come out uh, from the first contractor, do some, uh, you know, more exact measurements. And, uh, you know, then they can give me some price ideas about what it would be other than a lot because he goes, well, you're basically building another house. And I said, yep, I understand that. Uh, so, you know. Mama Blair wrote in saying her laundry is actually in the kitchen. I, I've seen that a lot in some of the houses we've looked at in like Pennsylvania. Yeah, and I, I it, as a Jersey guy that I have only ever known laundry in my basement. That is how I, that's a Jersey thing. I don't know why it, it's no, it's, it's, it's an American thing, but it's very yeah. annoying. OK, yeah, it, it's ours was like, originally in the basement. Then we moved it up into a separate room off the kitchen. And now we're going to be moving it again. And as I told the construction like, guy, I'm like, eventually we'll find out where it makes sense. In my parents' house, so the, the, the one brilliant thing my, my grandfather did, like, because the house was built with one of those stupid in-between-the-studs laundry hampers, the big metal-looking thing, right, that you lift mm -hmm. up the top and put your dirty clothes in, then you flip open and you could open the whole cabinet and everything would fall out. My grandfather in that bathroom basically built a hole or cut a hole in the bottom of the linen closet floor. Mm-hmm. And that became a laundry chute that went directly down into the laundry room. So you could just pop the latch and all the dirty clothes would come 
Yeah. yeah we, right into the we laundry room. We shoot from the second great. floor all the way to the basement. Yep. See? And, and that's, that's great. When we moved into the house, I was told, okay, hey, we need to get all these clothes down to the laundry room. So I, was, I heard, hey, here's all these clothes. They need to go through into the laundry chute. So I said, oh, great. I get to see how many clothes I can fill the entire laundry chute with. <laughs> and I did. So we had a two-story, no, three-story tall <laughs> tower of clothes in the laundry chute, which was a lot of weight at the bottom of it. I, I guess it was kind of difficult to pull it all back out. <laughs> was, uh, but but still, so fundamentally, you know, that was a two-and-a-half-story <laughs> tall building. Why are you taking all your clothes three stories down to do laundry and then carry them all the way back up three stories? Have, that didn't make any have you guys seen I ask that question of my parents every time I go over to that house because my mother and stepfather are still living on the top floor of the house. The laundry is still in the bottom floor. They are both going to be pushing 80. Why in the hell are you still going up and down those steps? Yeah, they're going to need a uh, they're, they're going to need a lift chair just for the laundry. No, you know, no, no. No, they are not putting a lift chair in this house. No, <laughs> are you sure? It's bad. I hear absolutely. I not. hear it's maybe bad yes. enough. No, it is bad enough that I will be talking to my mother on the phone. She is on the main floor, and I will hear. She'll call me from her cell phone. I will hear the house phone ring, and it's my stepfather calling from the upstairs, asking her, "What are you doing?" <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me? You don't need a damn chair. Now, no, he's asked about it, and I've told him, no, I'm sorry. You know they have a weight limit, right? <laughs> oh, trust me. They can they can make mighty uh, – Shush. Shut up. Uh, shut up. Strong shut chairs. up in case he ever listens. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> By the way, have There's you a seen – weight limit. You can't do it. Have you seen the modern The wall laundry will not support it. Have you seen the modern laundry chutes, though? The air-powered laundry chutes? Oh, here. Watch. This is great. So this is – I won't play the audio, but, yeah. So mom's here picking up laundry, picking up laundry, doing all the fun stuff, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, okay, typical doing laundry, washing the dog evidently. Uh, but let's see here. What does she do next? Uh, okay, trudging up and down stairs, hates it. You know, nobody likes stairs. Stairs suck, blah, blah, blah. Oh, here comes the laundry jet. The laundry jet is what we need for this problem. And uh, so then, here, I'll put that there. Uh, so then all you have to do now is turn it on, open the, open the little port, and whack. <laughs> Just throw your clothes at the door or at the wall, and it will drop Sucks it in like a bank tube and <laughs> drops it into the into the laundry. That's the easy part. Yeah, I know. What they need is like the opposite, where you can load it in at the bottom and have it shoot out at the kids in their rooms. Yes. But do they have the jumble version with a tube big enough for you know my jeans to go through? <laughs> so I just I thought this was funny because I'm like they have some of these where, my... where they're doing, like, trick shots. So I was gonna say, you put that in my house, man. Some... <laughs> a dog's some gonna go for a ride. Gonna... Yeah, this stupid cat. <laughs> yeah, so... Dumbass cat. We got cats. They're the reason why we can't have the stupid touch faucet. <laughs> my water bill will triple because the stupid cat will turn it on, not turn it off bad enough i'm filling the coffee pot now i got one cat that's like sitting there pawing at the faucet while i'm trying to fill the coffee pot I'm like okay fine you get your drink good lord yeah. Mom, Mom Blair. Back in this house and i guarantee if you turn on this thing that's that's more powerful enough to, to suck clothing through the house the dogs are going to be going crazy every single time you use it yep mama blair right now and that's why three years ago we went to ground floor living we have a finished basement, but we don't have to go down there. <laughs> and Mrs. Mrs. Eight Man writing in, your ass is stupid. 
She not, she's sick right now. She ain't feeling good. So she, everything, everything she said, everything I say is gonna be annoying. I know this. This poor. So all right. So in addition to her not feeling well, which I sympathize about, she went to the doctor today. She got some medication. And all. Hopefully she starts feeling better tomorrow. D- does she got uh, the COVID? Or just the no, flu? No, she doesn't have the COVID. We did a test. It's not the COVID. Okay. I don't know if it, I don't think it's the flu. I don't know. Maybe it's this RSV that's going around and nobody knows. Anyway. Ah. Uh, she has been the trooper that has been sleeping on the couch the last two days. What'd because, you do? Because, uh, not because, not because she wasn't feeling good, but because it's the only way either one of us are going to get any kind of sleep right now because of our new addition. Mm. Ms. Rosie, who hasn't quite figured out that nighttime is when it's time to sleep now. So, is she a party animal? She, I, you know, as I as I sit here and talk about it, I think that maybe. Well, my first thought, the logical one, was nighttime is when. The Millers were inside, so that's when the dogs felt more relaxed to start, you know, just walk around. And, you know, they knew they had a reprieve for a little while. Mm. But then there's part of me that says, is she looking for a way to escape while Mm. we're sort of sleeping? uh, Because getting acclimated takes time. And learning oh, that yes. you're the good people, yes. you know, yeah, I yes. get it. She, uh, and for those who, for those who don't follow me on on Instagram or or Facebook or what have you, and I may not have made this public, anyways, but uh, we we rescued a seven year old Bijan who literally came out of the mill on Thursday. That was her first non mill human contact, and. She's now home with us, and we th- I thought Tucker was bad when we brought him home. Tucker had been in a foster home for six weeks. He learned how to be around humans and other dogs and what have you. It just takes you a while to trust her. That was the first time she was ever around humans was when she got pulled. Mm-hmm. So this is a completely – this is even worse than when Tucker came home. Hmm. So, yeah, Kim has been sleeping on the couch. God bless her. I, I, I love my wife. Yeah. Well, and you guys, you know, you guys are, are, are uh, a breed apart, you know, everything that you guys do for, for those dogs. So, you know, uh, I, I know that all the dogs appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I don't think we, we bring attention enough to what you guys, you know, do for, for all the animals. So, well, we're not. We we do it because it's the right thing to do. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's and and we have the ability to do it. That's, yeah. but so, thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. So getting to some of the stuff on the white. Speaking of dogs, so Mike, you brought up this article, and we had talked about it before. Uh, the dog toy company that got sued by Jack Daniels. Yes. So I reread it. And when I first posted it, I thought, oh, well, here we go. So the the toy company that was making the dog toys that looked like Jack Daniels bottles, um, the Supreme Court decided that the lower court needs to reevaluate this case. I thought the Supreme Court sided with Jack Daniels. No. What they actually said was the lower court didn't do their due diligence when they – handed down their decision, they kicked it back and said, look at this again. Yeah. Yeah. Do your job. Do you do a more thorough job looking at the facts of the case? And I'm so I'm kind of torn now when you see the picture of them side by side. I have seen. I do think that it is too, it, it is a lot of a likeness. Like I've seen parodies of the Jack Daniels lo- label before, which essentially is their, you know, is trademarked. I, 
I think they have a semi-valid case here. Um, I do think that they should be restricted in, or the toy company should be restricted in how much of a likeness they can they can have. And I think this carries over to other products as well, one of which being like edibles. Now that pot's being legalized all over the place, there's no reason to make edibles that are packaged to look like candy. Yeah. Well-known candy. It's, and granted, edibles and dog toys, not exactly the same category. But the principle of the argument, as far as intentionally using something that is a likeness of a well-known product. Well, I think it's, I think it's, one, I, I think it's a, I think that with, when you get into cannabis and edibles and stuff like that, um, I think you have a marketing issue in a different sense in that it's an appeal issue. Okay? So just like the cigarette companies had when they were using animated mascots and, you know, they were using cartoons to advertise their products, they were marketing towards a younger audience. Okay? They were marketing towards an audience who shouldn't necessarily have had their products by law. Okay? So they were, they were trying to garner that audience. I don't know that there's a direct correlation here, but definitely trademark infringement is an issue. I mean, we have been accused of copyright infringement before for things that we know were parody use uh, but, or, or fair use, but that, you know, it's difficult to, to justify or to, to fight because you're the little guy. Now, this, this here, you know, um, could they have put this label on a round bottle and gotten away with it probably if they'd have picked a stereotypical bottle shape and used the same label they probably wouldn't have had nearly as uh, as hard of a claim of saying well it's parody use or it's you know it's it's not a likeness issue but in in this case they use the exact shape size everything um and the label and everything else so there, there there's yeah. even though it's a different market um you know it's very obvious that they are infringing upon the customer base that already exists uh, for the original product so that creates the problem so if they like yeah, i said it's not, if, enough, it's not enough of a parody yeah i mean they changed the words they added the dog they changed the color but there's you know, so it's it's a it's not enough like the big dog T-shirts or, you know, the, the, the other stuff, you know, where it's obvious, you know, it's 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 beach over the head with it. Um, you know, this is a, a bit different, I think. But see, this this comes down. This also it's this would set a precedent because I've seen a lot of. A lot of dog toys, like uh, instead of Gucci, they have Poochie, and it looks exactly like Gucci stuff. Yeah. Um, instead of Louis Vuitton, it's Chewy Vuitton, and it's patterned exactly the same. So it's to me, this is not so much about, yeah, it's a liquor company, it's a dog toy company. This, I think, could set a precedent for trademark enforcement and that is going to trickle down to all of these sellers on etsy and the facebook groups and the, if this passes and and jack daniels is found or they're they're victorious here you're going to see a lot of these companies start going out and saying we have the grounds to stop we have a legal precedent that we can stop and we can enforce this I think you're going to see more. It's happening I now with I bigger companies, but I think you're going to see more and more. Yeah. I think it's a scale issue. The problem is, is that this is apparently a big enough dog toy company that they went to the trouble of actually going to court over this. I mean, usually these things are, you know, a company on Amazon called well, Harfin Kook. 
and they sell something. If someone says, hey, no, that's ours, they go, oh, okay, I, we, okay we're no longer in business. And then tomorrow, Barf and Bar is not selling the same thing. But it's a different company. And honestly, it also matters where the offending company is at. So if you yeah. look at, for example, because I just took your you know, Chewy Fatone uh, and threw it into Amazon, right? So if you take a look, yeah, you're right. There's absolutely you know, Sniffany and Company, uh, Mara Canine Express, you know, there's, you know, uh, Star Pups Coffee, you know, Coco Chunel, um, Toto's, you know, uh, Fergie. But I guarantee if I look at most of these, the companies that are making these products, they're all based out of China. Okay. And the Chinese, um, you know, are known for not caring about American copyright law. All right. They That's have true. a whole culture that, you know, trades in on violating copyright law uh, of other countries. God forbid you violate one of their copyrights, then they're going to go after you while they can. They'll make it a government issue. But, um, you know, so I think one of the differences here is that you have an American company and an American company. So therefore, they have standing in the American courts, whereas if it's a offshore company, you can't stop them. Uh, you know, the most thing, the best thing you could do is stop imports of that item from that company. But from what I have read and from what I know, all that it takes is that company to change their name, which they do, which is why you end up with so many weird names of companies on Amazon and eBay, etc. Because um, they'll just change one letter and boom, now they're a different company. They get around the import, you know, restrictions and they're off and running it again. So. That, the rule is they have to be an actual company registered with the government, which is why they keep creating all those weird names, because every single one of them has to be registered in New Jersey. Not in New Jersey. Uh, what's the state that everything's registered in? Delaware. Uh, Delaware. Delaware. Yeah. Yeah. They all have a mailbox in Delaware. Yeah, not New Jersey, trust me. <laughs> not New Jersey. So, I mean, you know. So. Yeah, I, I think that. I think you're right, though. I think that these things will eventually extend out to Etsy and things like that, where it's, it's you know, local local manufacturers, local uh, small businesses and stuff like that. They'll, they'll be the ones that get, you know, squeezed out um, because they don't understand what they're doing is wrong. I mean, we've talked about copyright violations before and trademark infringements before on Etsy and some of those other platforms, um, you know, and who's doing it right, who's not doing it right, et cetera. Um, you know, and unfortunately, the big players who infringe, they won't get touched. It'll be all the small people that, you know, just don't know what they're doing or think that what they're doing is fine because, well, we're not making the millions that the big brands are, um, you know. But, yeah, it's a, it's it's kind of ridiculous the way that things are going. Yeah. What they need and, to do is they need to get something like they have for uh, music where – Anybody can do something with any any music. All they have to do is go and get one of the uh, automatic contracts that says that, hey, I'm going to build this thing out of this music, and I'm going to pay this much, and it's automatic, and nobody can come to you and say, hey. The big problem right now is that you know, Jack Daniels could say, yes, you can do that if you pay us this, but now they have, because they've officially licensed it, they now have, um, they can now be blamed for that thing. You know, if it turns out those dog toys uh, aren't made correctly, they're falling apart, start killing dogs, then that looks bad for Jack Daniels. But if there was some automatic thing where it says, hey, you come here, you can license this thing, you can make it, they get so much money per thing, and everybody knows that that's an automatic thing, then they have no liability at that point. But that's something that only the government can put in place. I don't know. Mike, you were trying to say something. Well, yeah, the other, the other thing that I think about, because Jack Daniels has been known to send, they're notorious that they've sent cease and desist letters. They, you know, the, Mm -hmm. they're one of the companies that I feel like tried to be fair. They tried to not go the legal route. They would send a letter and say, hey, you're selling this product. It's using a logo that is very much like our trademark label. Um, don't do it anymore, please. 
and most of the time, no problem. What I, what I'm, what I'm thinking about though is, will this, will this then, if it does, if they do side with Jack Daniels, will this eventually trickle down? Like one of the things that has been talked about is, so Amazon is listing all of these products that may be based out of China. Do you start holding? Amazon responsible for allowing these products to be sold in their marketplace, knowing since there has been a precedent. Yeah. Amazon, we did not license to the to have any of this type of product made. You should not be listing them. Is the Amazon now liable? So that's that's something that could come down as well. Unfortunately, at the Amazon level, there's they're basically running under something very similar to like how the DMCA works which is if someone comes to them and says, hey, this thing on, is this on Amazon, this is infringing, then Amazon removes it. And as long as Amazon continues to remove it, that's all that Amazon has to do. That's, that is something else where uh, there have been hearings in Congress talking about that because they know that all they're doing is changing the name of the company and putting it back on there again. And because the requ- the request was for the previous meaningless name, there's nothing that stops it. Yeah, so to give you an idea of Jack Daniels in their previous dealings with copyright infringement, uh, so here is another here is a, another cease and desist letter that they had written, uh, this time to Patrick Winsink, uh, who wrote a book called Broken P- Piano for President. And uh, so they sent him a cease and desist letter and in the cease and desist letter, which you can you can, you know, Google it. it, But they basically say, hey, listen, we appreciate your um, your your brand recognition and your, you know, fandom of our brand. Uh, But, you know, it, it we have to be diligent about ensuring Jack Daniels trademarks are used correctly. Given the brand's popularity, it will probably come as no surprise that we came across your designs designs like this on a regular basis. Um, uh, see here, in order to resolve this matter, and because you are both a Louisville neighbor and a fan of the brand, we simply request that you change the cover design when the book is reprinted. That's being pretty generous. If you would be willing to change the design sooner than that, including on the digital version, we would be willing to contribute a reasonable amount towards the cost of doing so. Now, they don't have to do that at all, but they're willing to give him some money towards no. redoing the cover. Uh, by taking this step, you will help us to ensure that the Jack Daniels brand will mean as much to future generations as it does today. So, I mean, that's a that's like people have uh, said this is a this should be a pattern for a cease and desist letter moving forward. You know. Yeah. What? Yes, except don't offer money. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know. Do not offer money for it. Because that then you're going to get people doing it intentionally, knowing to, that it'll be to get a pay easy out. to switch, and just to get a payout. Yeah, that's going to be the new McDonald's hot coffee right there, is that you're going to. Yeah. But, no, you know, right. but it's a, it, but it is a, uh, but it's nice. They recognize the the fandom. They you know recognize his work, and then they say, "Hey, listen, would you mind cutting it out, um, and doing it when it's convenient for you and isn't going to be cost prohibitive?" You know, that that's a great cease and desist letter right there. So, <clears throat> yeah. All right. Uh, moving on from from dog toys. Uh, to another thing that I believe is one of the stupidest things in the world and that I th- I hope everyone will agree with me on. And, Colin, you probably fly the most of all of us, so I'm, I'm curious as to your thoughts on this. So <clears throat> we all know that they try to pack us in like sardines on airplanes, all right? The seats have gotten smaller and smaller and closer together, so that they can get as many people as possible onto a flight that they have probably delayed three times already uh, and or have maybe canceled. So now, evidently, one airliner is teasing the idea 
of double decker airplane seats. And just looking at the picture here where you've got, you know, one pair of seats slightly elevated and pushed back so that the people in front of you's butts is right at nose level of yours because nobody like the only thing worse than uh, having to float in an emergency situation on a cushion full of airplane farts is having one right in front of you for a long flight right in front of your face. Uh, so that is the idea that is now being thought of in order to make passengers more comfortable on flights, giving them more legroom by elevating the people in front so, of them. Something I just noticed, though, is mm -hmm. there's a solid back, which obviously makes sense because the, people, the, the seats on the lower level have to have something that their tray tables will be mounted to. So if that's like a chute that keeps airflow from going into your face, that's not I don't... terrible. But like, look, okay. So look at that. Look at the row. No, no, no. Go back. Go back. Look at the row on the right of that picture. Yeah. The, the one with the faces. Okay. This is where this is where the lag really. The one with the faces. Okay. okay. Yes. So look at the seats on the right of that picture. You see the white underneath the seat? Yeah, but I don't. No, I don't. No, 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 no. The row behind it, the empty row behind it. Yeah. By where the feet would oh, be. Oh, there, there. You see the white. So, yeah. So there's solid. It's solid there and solid floor, which makes sense now that I'm thinking about it because people, start, you're still going to yeah, have you... to stow stuff under your seat. But you see no, the little. If that gap. solid part extends up. If that solid part extends up, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm still not trusting it's it. Possible. I am I am not saying I like this idea in any way, shape, or form. No. So so here's the thing about this. So first off, this is not an airliner. This is some guy designed this and has it patented. He's trying to get people to have interest in it. So if he can get somebody to buy it, then he can make money on oh, it. Oh, if they so can, if they can, and you stuff. you can't tell me if they can put thirty percent more passengers on a plane, they're not going to do it in a heartbeat. Well, this, I mean, this so everything is getting so squished right now. This is closer to giving people more room with the same number of people. Uh, I'd be more. I mean, I, I know you have this fixation on this whole. Uh, farting thing. I'm more worried about liquids. Um, you know, someone's drinking their uh, soda up there, and they drop the cup, and then, and then it splashes down on me underneath. I, that's not. I, that's not going to be happy. Yeah. Well, I don't want some hot brown on me either. If somebody has an upset tummy, all right. Yeah. So it, it, here's any of that is you know bad, but um, no. The, the, the biggest problem with this is actually has nothing to do with that. It is that there's nowhere for the underseat luggage. <laughs> Mama Blair says, so it's fart class. So we have gone well, one step below economy. So here's the other problem, though, as I'm thinking about this and looking at that picture. I thought, Colin, I thought you were, maybe this is because I'm like more of an engineer in that in this respect, but no... I cannot think of a modern airplane other, that would actually have the headroom to be able to do a double decker. You would have to completely right. redesign the airframe around these seats. And if you're going to do see, that, then you might as well just make it wider and not have. Right. Well, I think you, plus, is there actually. I was going to say, I think you run into a problem trying to make the airplanes any wider because there are some of them are already reaching the width capacity for the runways that they're on. So you do have an option to go. No, that's not, uh, that's not, that's, that, that's not an issue. Uh, the problem is, is that the airframe is big enough, but you would be losing the luggage space. So there would not be yep. room for the overhead luggage. There's no room for under seat luggage because I usually put that under the seat in front of you. There's not enough room 
and that thing at your feet for an actual carry-on. And you would have to move the floor down and below all the people, that's where all the luggage is and mail and everything else that's being shipped. And so you're, you're reducing the amount of luggage that can be sent. So that's just, it was just, that's just not going to work. So let me ask you this. Do you think there could be an airline where you lay flat and they stack you like three high? No. Easy there, uh, Corbin Dallas. I'm just, I'm just thinking, you know, because there's Only some. Only if they make you sleep. I mean, because I'm just thinking they could, they could, they could, you know, bunk bed you. They could fit you in there. Uh, I think on an airline that might be a safety issue as well because of turbulence. You're going to. They be, don't care you about your yourself. safety. So you can't be. You can't be laying seats down. seats like you're landing. talking about, though. Yeah, the seats that you're talking that they show there, I can actually see that more so on a train, like a commuter train. I could see a concept like that working. Well, we already have two uh, levels on trains. Yeah, so I was, no, 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 no. That, that's pretty much I'm not talking about like I'm not talking about like Amtrak. I'm talking about like you're talking about New York, like, New Jersey commuter. Yeah, like the Chicago L. Is what you're yeah. talking about. So something, you want like you that, want, I could... so you want mugging to be easier because you're trapped under someone else's seat. Well, I didn't say it made sense. I still am not a fan <laughs> of this whole arrangement. What I'm saying is it would I think it would be more feasible for a short term a short distance where you don't don't have the luggage problem that Colin pointed out on the airline because he's absolutely right. What a lot of people and even I wasn't fully aware of that a lot of these airlines they almost subsidize at times, at least the international ones do, they they sell cargo space on passenger planes to, oh, to yeah, bring packages in, that, in yeah. the car. All right, so that that helps keep flight uh, flight costs down. You don't want to get rid of that space. Well, I think what we should all just start doing is start shipping our clothes to our destination and then back. I who where there was a comedian that did, Rosie O'Donnell talked about doing that. That when she traveled, she never paid for luggage. She just shipped her stuff FedEx to the hotel before she left. Now, of course, it was, you know, FedEx is probably the most expensive and least reliable, but that's besides the point. <laughs> I mean, that's because they're still or, paying they're out for, for that's, that's what they lawsuit. Do. Or uh, I got an idea. This is great. I This is perfect. Just order all your clothes on Amazon, have them delivered to the hotel, and then when you have to go back, return them all. So what you're saying <laughs> is if you're going for less than a week, you could furnish your entire wardrobe from try before you buy. Yes. You could put your underwear in your carry-on because that's not something you probably want to, you know, not wash first. I, I, you know. Well, depending on where you're going on vacation, you don't need underwear. That's true. That's true. Well, if you're going to a nudist resort, you don't need any clothes. You don't need nothing. Nobody on this show is going to a nudist resort. Why are you even lying? You might as well say that we're going to Boston to run the marathon. Okay. Well, well you just might. as believable. I'm not. So, but, but think about it, though, Mike. Okay, go on vacation. You have Amazon packages waiting at your Airbnb when you get there. With all your your shirts and your pants, and they're ready to go. And then, when you time to go home, you just drop them off at a UPS at or FedEx. Yeah, Coles. And you know, because they don't even need boxes to go back. On your way oh, no, to the no, airport. No. no, 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 nay, nay. Some of the stuff does require boxes now. Oh well. That's fine. You know, that's not so, hard. Here's a PSA, folks. When you're doing an Amazon return, make sure you look closely at the bottom of your QR code because sometimes it says customer packaging. 
which means if you go to the UPS store and you don't have a box, they're going to try and sell you a box. Well, but, oh, no, actually, no. Amazon is trying to charge now for, they're trying to charge a dollar uh, a surcharge if you go to, like, a UPS store to return your stuff. Yeah. So they're they're encouraging you to go to like either an Amazon Locker, or um or or a Kohl's where they have an agreement. Yeah. So I mean, but that sounds awesome. Is it's just no a no clothes vacation. Here's the well, but here's the problem. Well, yeah, okay, you go ahead. And, uh, if by no clothes you mean the Amazon thing, here's the problem with it. Um, we we were just talking about all of these brands like. I have never ordered the same thing off of Amazon twice in the same size and have it fit exactly the same way. Well, that is true. So there is no way in hell I'm going to chance going on vacation and trusting my size, the size guide on Amazon to, to fit my clothes. I'm, I would rather chip them USPS or FedEx or something. I was just trying to get it down. To here's like- a new, here, Here's an idea for a business, Airbnb that includes clothes. What? Okay, so how how are you going to do that? You know how many sizes there are. Fat people like 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 myself are going to have to try and find like the big and tall Airbnb. So, so <laughs> here's a real that? thing. Who works? Spandex jeggings. <laughs> here's a real thing that actually exists in Orlando, Florida. You pay for this big plastic box, and it sits in the warehouse most of the, most, most of the year. And then when you go to Orlando, you let them know what hotel you're going to be at. They deliver your big plastic box to your hotel, and then you have whatever you put in there. And at the end of your stay, they come and pick the box back up and stick it back in their warehouse. Yeah, it's called a so, great if you, that's a storage unit. That's great if you have a vacation. <laughs> well, no. I no, I get that. Like for folks that have like a timeshare, right? That that's that's yeah. brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. In fact, that may be my retirement plan. I I would gladly be the guy that, that delivers the boxes. Like you could be a box boy. And stores the boxes. That's fine, man. Box monkey. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> But timeshare, that's why it's called owner's locker, because it is mostly used by timeshare. Yeah, that that's brilliant. I've never heard of that before, but it's absolutely brilliant. <sighs> so, um, now, if you took it the next step and said, well, they'll ship that box to you wherever you are in the world, then there could be a purely you know, universal vacation clothes box. Okay, so here we go. This is the new FTX idea. Ready? Yep. So you pay an annual membership fee Mm -hmm. to be able to ship that box wherever in the continental United States you're going to, you're traveling from your house. So you load up the box, flat rate, membership fee. We pick it up, bring it where you want it to, where you're going on vacation, and then bring it back when you're done. Mm Mm-hmm. And after two years of collecting membership fees, then we'll offer the lifetime membership fee. And then and we'll then close business. In year three, <laughs> then we will disappear. <laughs> that's right. Be- through <laughs> bankruptcy proceedings. Yeah, that's right. Because lifetime but will mean we the will lifetime have, of the company. We will have made our money, and we will retire in Boca Raton, <laughs> where right. we will only wear polyester clothing. <laughs> okay. Here you go. So inside the box, it has different has laundry bags. You know, this is the this is the dark colors. This is the white. And so, when we pick up the box, we go ahead and do the laundry for you, and then put the box in the warehouse. You mean that's years, starting to sound like actual work now? No, no. So you you partner. Maybe. That's yep. a premium. That is a premium. Where we partner oh, with local yeah, sir. where we partner okay. with local dry a, cleaners. Yeah. We don't do it. We we that, we no, sub no, that out. We're not doing it. But you pay extra. Then you pay three, extra for that. Three years, we put a big sign on a self serve salvation army thrift shop. 
on the front of the warehouse <laughs> and then disappear. Which is, we hold a garage sale. <laughs> By the way, talking about garage sales and self-service. So I had talked to you guys, I think, before about the the deals shop that was here that bought Amazon returns and just had tables of them. They closed. I went to go see them on Friday, and they're not in business anymore. I'm a bit upset about that. I really wanted to go find I, my my iPads and my my laptops and my you know stuff there. So they opened an Ollie's by us. I don't know if you guys know Ollie's Bargain Outlet. I don't no. know if they have that out there. All right, so it's kind of like uh, what else? What would it be like? Uh, Job Lot or uh, Martin's? Okay. Or, uh, Big Lots, but on Big a, Lots. Yeah. Okay, big well, big lots is like the national chain that everybody kind of knows. Okay. Ollie's uh, good stuff, cheap. I was, yeah. Well, okay. Let's let let's talk about this. Um, good is never cheap, and cheap is never good. So, and Ollie's is living up to that name because honestly, I was all excited for it. I was like, this is gonna be great. This is one of those stores you can walk in and you can find like flooring for like ten cents a square foot, which that's probably about the only reason you would want to go in was because yeah. they have closeout flooring for, for, for dirt cheap. Um, the rest of this story is complete and utter crap that might as well just be Amazon return pallets because it's... <laughs> are, you a, are you a member of Ollie's Army Customer Rewards Program? No. So, and here's the worst part about it. They built it next to, next to my Aldi's. <laughs> okay. So, one, the parking lot is now filled with people going in to buy crap. Two, there are, there are Ollie's carts all over the damn parking lot because Ollie's doesn't need a quarter. And, you know, nobody cares if they leave their, their carts all over. And three, people are taking the damn Ollie's carts into Aldi, which is screwing up the checkout procedure (laughs) because the cashiers cannot switch out an Ollie's cart with an Aldi cart. (laughs) Messing up the entire rotation. They got to put a sign on. This is going to be my job when I retire. (laughs) Standing at Aldi's door, I'm going to be the Aldi's cart security guard. (laughs) <laughs> Self-appointed. And I'm going to sell. You cannot come in here with this Aldi's cart. Get a quarter. Go get a real cart, please. And if they say no, I will tase them. That will be my job. <laughs> okay. I will be uh, I will be Aldi's cart security, a.k.a. the cart Nazi. Or just say, you can bring the card in here, but you still have to give me a quarter or you're not getting it back. Does that make me a tipped employee? (laughs) Because if that's the case, that could be a deal. No, I guess what I'm saying is, do you actually have to be an employee? Would they actually stop you if you decide just to stand out there and tell people they have to give you a quarter to bring the card in? (laughs) Well, I think somebody would, somebody probably, eventually somebody's going to be like, well, who the hell are you? Yeah, I got a badge, man. I'm, I'm official. It says Aldi <laughs> cart security. <laughs> they gave me the shirt. The badge. Shaggy's writing down my damn ideas. You're going to steal them, aren't you? No, I, I have an idea for the end of the show. The I have a stolen show. a stolen idea for the end of the show. Oh dear lord! I guess if you just stood out there with a sign that says, "Give me a," I uh, said, uh, twenty five cents to use the alley cart inside Aldi," and then actually make anybody give you a quarter, they just gave you a quarter. I could. <laughs> so it's possible. So. Uh, it, it, 
I mean, anything in this world is possible right now. And Bill Murray is living proof of this. Yes. I, I, I find myself in the last year of this show. And this is not a commentary on the show. It's a commentary on the world. I find myself in the last year of this show saying things that I thought I would have needed to be on peyote in order to actually be saying. Um, but Bill Murray is apparent is allegedly dating Khalees. Yes, who, allegedly. Many pe- many people may not know by name, but. Her milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Yeah. <laughs> How? Now, listen. If it comes out that Khalees is pregnant, <laughs> I think that I'm going to probably lose my I'm, – I don't know what I'm going to do. Bill Murray becoming a dad at his age. Look, Hollywood just needs to stop then, all right? Listen, settle this writer's strike. Get these freaking guys back to work already because there's this is a this is a side effect of the fact that there's no new scripts for these guys, no movies for these guys to make. So what are they doing? They're making babies at 89, 90, I don't know. De Niro's what, 137? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like seriously, this has got to be for publicity. Does he have a new movie coming out or something? Well, there, there, the, there's another Ghostbusters. I, I, I know there's another Ghostbusters he, coming, but I don't think so. Would he really? Like, I, I don't understand. Well, I mean, you said it yourself. Her milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. And I understand he's Bill frickin' Murray, but come on now. (sighs) You know, love knows no age, Mike. You know, you, you married an older woman. You know what it's like. You're trying to get me killed. Either that or you're just trying to see if she's still listening. (laughs) She. I don't. Who's going to be the next Hollywood power couple? Uh, hmm, Let's see here. I think that's a that's a great question. Uh, Her her, uh, Emma Watson and um, I, I don't know. Patrick Stewart? I don't Let's see. It'll probably be two people we don't know. All right. So it's going to be... Two people we don't know, but you're going to name them. Yeah, yeah. No, it's going to be two people... Who's been drinking? It's going to be two people that we have no idea who the hell they are. So it's going to be... What the hell... Who the hell's name is Role Model? There's a person named Role Model? Really? Their parents hate them or what? You know what? I think it's going to be Tia Carrera and and uh, and and uh, we know who she is, by the way. I know. I'm now. I'm trying to think of the other one. It's it, uh, Paul Rubens, Tia Carrera, and Paul Rubens. That's gonna be the next power couple. Uh, neither one of them have any power in Hollywood, but okay. Well, that's what it's gonna come from nowhere. You know, it's it's, uh, it's gonna I'm... hit everybody from 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 left field completely i don't know i was i was i was thinking maybe jaden smith and dame judy dench might be the next power couple i don't know no i don't think so uh you know 
I only said Tia Carrera because I've been watching a uh, TV series with her. So, you know, I found an old TV Shit. series called Relic Hunter. Relic Hunter. Okay. It's, uh, think of if you were to mix uh, Indiana Jones and Warehouse 13 together. It's actually it's pretty funny. It's it's not bad, and there's only two seasons of it. But the, and they're old like '90s seasons, so there's like 24 episodes in a season. So you know it's it's not okay. the new not the new like 2020 season where there's eight episodes. You know so. I um I, 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 gotta say, I do have a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. You have much more important things. No, 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 Austin. No, no, it's really not. Go ahead. I was just going to say, Indiana Jones plus Warehouse 13 equals Warehouse 13. There's not, I mean, it's already there. So I was curious about one thing, Mike. Has the, has the sky cleared up any? Yes, it has. There's no more Good. Mad Max looking out here by us. Good Lord. For, for anyone who was following the news, all right, yes, you know I'm in Jersey. We had the smoke from the Canadian wildfires that come through. And I sent a picture to the guys. I said, you guys getting this? They're like, no, we're not. I'm like, dude, look at this. Is it... From my front door, it looked like one of those old Wild West pictures, like, like the scene you saw at the beginning of Tombstone when they were telling you the story. Yeah, I mean, you, there's no filter on that, folks. The world looked like it had a sepia filter. Uh, is it, and it smelled like burning tires that's for a little while too it was it was bad but yes the air cleared up thank god uh i think that might be what part of the reason why kim got sick because a lot of people seem to get respiratory issues after that uh yeah. colds uh sinus sinusitis all, all kinds of stuff so uh i tried to limit my outdoor activity during that time so i drank a lot and um <laughs> yes yeah i uh so actually what i was going to ask you mm -hmm. yeah um because i happened to be no i was noticing i was looking for something at lunch to watch and i sometimes look at uh i i look to see what you've been watching and i noticed that the arc is is in your library now so i'm curious if you just downloaded or did you oh, actually no. start watching it uh yeah i watched it all okay. i watched it all and and i really want season two to come out now i like it okay i liked it okay good yeah season two is it's is coming. coming yeah I just yeah don't know when. yeah no i i definitely enjoyed it it was good to watch uh you know, it was a little bit of a slow start, but it was uh, it was definitely good. So okay, happy with that one. I I am considering watching what the Outpost. That was another one by the same director. So, um, but not sure about that one yet. And one other th question I have: Has anyone watched Stars on Mars? Because I forgot that it was on. No, but I mildly curious. Uh, just because yeah. of the people that are on there. Although, interesting real fact. So right now there is a actual NASA experiment going on to check the viability of a uh, a moon base. It's one of those that's kind of the same same idea, right? So they're testing out the habitat as well as how people adjust to isolation and everything else. Turns out I know someone in the experiment. I know one of the really? doctors. I know one of the doctors involved in the experiment. I won't say I know him really well, uh, but he he goes to the same church that I do. He actually treated me in the ER one time, um, you know. And so, really interesting. He's going to be there for eighteen months, uh, away from family, friends, and everything else, uh, testing to see uh, how how feasible it is. He's he's a medical doctor. And um, I guess there is a potential opportunity that 
depending upon how things go and and there's a lot of ifs and ands or and ors he would never make it to mars and mars isn't going to happen in his lifetime but there is a potential that he could be on a moon mission so you know that is is very exciting um you know so it's uh you know so if i uh you know, if I have the opportunity at some point, um, I would I would love to get him onto the show. Obviously, it'll be a long time before that happens, but I would love to talk to him about what his experience is, is like uh, going through that that type of of adventure uh, with NASA. Because I think all of us at least have a passing um, interest in space and and that kind of stuff. So I think it would be interesting to 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 get the insights. From somebody who's oh, actually cool. lived it. So, and besides, we haven't had a guest on in a long time. So, you know, might be. Yeah, fun. I just wonder how much he'll be allowed to tell us. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. But um, but even if he can't, just to say, I did something. Yes, just just to say, hey, listen, and we like, had okay. some, we had somebody who was involved in a NASA experiment, and uh, you know, if we ever did, if he ever did go to the moon, it would be really cool to say, hey, we had a moon man on. <laughs> so, because uh, uh, you know there aren't that many of them. What there's like 300 people who have ever been to space. So pretty small population. Pretty small. Um, so yeah, I, I think it would be really awesome. All right, talking about things which are out of this world, we are going to get into our double feature movie review. Now this week we had two amazing films to review we had green ghost and the masters of the stone as well as black light so both fairly recent films uh green ghost and masters of the stone from 2021 black light from 2022 so we didn't go back into the deep archives on this one we actually got some relatively new films out uh, so, Colin, which one would you like to talk about first? Oh, definitely Blacklight. Blacklight is the one that Colin will be telling you all about. So, Colin, take it away and let us know what you think of Blacklight. Okay. So, Blacklight is the movie eraser with the cool guns gone. And Arnold replaced by Liam Neeson. And um, so this movie has one, three, maybe four big action sequences. Yeah, four. Four big action sequences, which are well done and uh, fun. You know, one of them has him doing this, you know, the eraser type thing. In this case, he's trying to have with his protection, he's actually um, in charge of retrieving undercover agents who uh, have run into issues. And that by itself would be an interesting premise. If they'd done just a movie about that, it'd be interesting. Instead, this is the standard plot of um, character knows too much, and so the evil government people have decided to send out hit squads to kill them and the other people who also work for the government find out about it and are trying to protect them. I, I thought she, he, he never actually tries to protect them because it's like, like I said, there's four big action sequences and then there's a couple good character pieces with characters talking to each other. And you learn more about them what, and what happened to them. That's good. And then the rest of the movie just doesn't really even barely exist. It's just, it's awful. Um, it's like they, they, they put the money into these good things, but they didn't spend any time stitching anything together. Um, the movie just kind of deflates at the end with the most useless ending ever. You know, movies like this are supposed to end with another big action sequence. And... This one is like the bad guy decides, oh, okay, I'm going to stop being a bad guy because you told me to. And the movie ends. 
it's just it, it's it boggles my mind that a major movie that actually I think this movie did show up in movie theaters. They didn't take the trouble to you know actually write the entire movie. I, I don't understand this. I, I'm going to give this movie a meh. It's as low as I can go for a real Hollywood movie with real actors in it. And it, it just angers me that they wasted so much money making this movie and didn't bother making a movie. All right. Um, I can go next. That's fine. Um, all right. So Blacklight with Liam Neeson is uh, a little bit similar to Born Identity. I would say uh, probably more so than Eraser, uh, but you know you can you can see where it it has some commonality with a lot of other action flicks. The, the pieces I really like into this were the human element that they gave Liam Neeson in this movie. I mean, normally you know Liam Neeson for the bang bang shoot him up, you know, break an arm, you know, break a neck, etc. Here, but they gave him ticks, and they gave him quirks and they gave him trying to live with those ticks and quirks and trying to overcome them to then have a successful family life realizing that those ticks and quirks had destroyed his previous family life and you know trying to have a character driven moment uh during the film and i actually i really appreciated that because it's not something you see in one of these movies very often i mean you take something like die hard right the only thing that got, you know, the characters back together at the end was the fact that he shot up a bunch of people and he saved her from the from the the terrorists. In this one, he, you know, during the entire movie, he is struggling with his problems, and you see that he really wants to make a change and get better for his granddaughter, and that is, it it humanizes him much more, I think, than some of its previous characters that he's played. So I actually congratulate Liam Neeson, I think, for finding a character that he can do more than just shoot things. Um, you know, I think he did I think he did really well in this. And, you know, uh, as Colin said, the end wraps up a little bit too too neatly, but again, I don't think that I think it was a means to an end for the other side story for the other aspects of this movie. So I'm actually going to give this one a smile. I really liked it. I thought that they did some, some great effects. I thought that the, the storytelling was pretty good. Um, I liked the complexity of the, of the, of the story and just the, the human element that it brought to everything. So yeah, I'm going to give it a smile. Mike. So 45 minutes into this movie and I finally, decide I'm going to take some notes on it. And my biggest complaint is that it took longer than two minutes for this guy to get away from Liam Neeson in the fight. Right, Liam Neeson isn't exactly agile, and you could tell when they're, when they're boxing. Anyway. If I do something three times, that tell me that I am the only person that thought Penny, 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 <laughs> while he, when he was doing that whole explanation. Of course I am, because nobody else no. here watches Big Bang Theory. No, I, I, I got gotcha. you. I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. I was going to say, because I'm also the only one who drinks cheap beer on this show. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Um, I, I, now, here's where I have a problem with the reality of this movie. Uh, in what world... Can a Chevy Suburban outdrive a Porsche 928? Porsche 928 was good enough to get to evade Guido the Killer Pimp in Risky Business. Uh, it should be good enough to avoid a Chevy Suburban easily. The straw that pushes him over the edge, him being Liam Neeson, take his granddaughter away from him. Cutting him out of their life completely. This is not going to end well at all. Spoiler alert to one of what I thought was the coolest scene in the movie when he turned the entire kitchen into a taser. That was a nifty trick that I will remember in case 
of a zombie apocalypse. Um, look, puke to Schnikes, all right? Short review here. I'm giving this one a smirk. It's Liam Neeson. I'm a fan of Liam Neeson. However, and see, so Colin said this was like Eraser. Shaggy, you said this was more like Born Identity. I just felt like this was like a B version of Taken and, and pretty much every other good movie that Liam Neeson has been in except for K-19, The Widowmaker. Um, I know this is going to be taken the wrong way. So hold on a sec. Seeing, after watching this and seeing the list of all his other movies on Prime, I need to know, does Liam Neeson owe somebody a lot of money? Because it seems like he's doing a lot of these very formulaic type movies that are bad takeoffs of Taken to pay off this ridiculous debt that he may have to some Saudi prince or something. I need to know. I need to know this before we start making assumptions because another famous Hollywood actor was doing (laughs) a lot of these very B-list, C-even type movies straight to video, and we can't make fun of him for doing them now because of his medical condition, which was revealed after the fact. So, Liam Neeson, if you listen to PTR Radio, I need to know if you're doing this because there's something medically wrong with you, please. No, I, I, I think the same thing happened to him that happened to Leslie. Is it also Nielsen? Well, yeah, yeah, Leslie Nielsen. Yeah. So there you had an actor who spent his entire career doing serious dramatic roles, playing the heavy a lot, and then suddenly Hollywood found out that he was good at comedy, and then he spent the rest of his career doing that because that's what they suddenly discovered he was good at. And I, before Taken, nobody knew that Liam Neeson was an action star. So he keeps getting these action movies given to him, and they want to pay him money, so he keeps doing it. Um, what, oh, what I will say is... What? Yes? What? No, go ahead. I'm... Okay. Look at um, So I completely agree with Shaggy as, as far as I really liked all the character stuff. My problem, and the reason why I gave this movie a man, the reason I was angry was none of it was resolved. You know, he had this little bit of drama going on with his daughter. His daughter was a bit worried about all the stuff he was in. And then suddenly she and her daughter get thrown into witness protection. As far as she knows, it was witness protection. And then a couple weeks later, he shows back up and everything's good now. So... Why is the daughter? Why is the relationship between he and his daughter suddenly okay? That's that's the thing. That's what didn't make any sense to me. Is that that well, entire plot line just didn't just it just got thrown away? And I really liked it. So okay, so nobody knew Liam Neeson was an action. I remember at the time that you know, Taken was this big thing where, you know, he, he he maybe done some action stuff before, but Taken was this thing where they were like, oh, he can do the um, Sylvester Stallone slash Schwarzenegger slash, you know, Bruce Willis style full on action hero stuff. Okay. I, yeah. I, I guess. I mean, I, I, I see what you're saying, where he's like the central character type. Because I see like ep- episode one, when he played Guy Gon Jin was before that. Les Mis was before that. Um, Schindler's List was before that. Rob Roy was before that. So I, I but I, I think Taken was more, I, I hate to say breakout role, considering the guy's been acting for 
forever yeah. here, but I, I, all right, I, I get what you're saying. I, yeah, because episode one it, was you it know, bothers me. Eight, it bothers me that it took. How, so 1983. This je, this guy was in one of perhaps the greatest movies of all time. All right, when did Taken come out? Taken came out. I don't know, early 90s? 2008. Okay. 2008. Or that. So it took 25 years after the movie Crawl came out for Liam Neeson's talent to be recognized. Uh. For action. I Crawl mean, was an action yes, movie. Schindler's List. Yeah. Schindler's List is what he was really known for, that kind of thing. For Taken. I... The fact that he does not put Crow right at the top of his resume, it, it it's like why doesn't <laughs> why doesn't Jim Carrey put Once Bitten right up at the top of his resume? I mean, <laughs> come on, they could be doing so much better if they would just capitalize on their hits. Yeah, we should probably move on. All right. So, <laughs> speaking of moving on, so uh, Colin is going to tell us, uh, give us his expert. Uh, opinion, his expert breakdown of the soon-to-be cult classic, uh, I'm sure, Green Ghost and the Masters of the Stone. So, Colin, uh, share us your tutelage. Okay, so I, I'm just going to tell the story. So, there's this guy named Charlie Clark. Charlie Clark, as a kid, had a bad relationship with his parents. His, his father was a bit abusive. Um, and so he uh, was abandoned. And he moved in with a Spanish family, with, uh, or with uh, Abuela, as he, as he called her. Um, became you know, very uh, completely bilingual between English and Spanish. Uh, as he grew up, he uh, w went into car dealerships. So now he was the car dealer. And um, at night, he was moonlighting as the green ghost. You know, he had a green costume on. And uh, he mostly was uh, entertaining kids as the green ghost. Ended up with an entire chain, actually, of... Uh, car dealerships. He franchised himself, got his picture up on billboards. And, you know, if, when you have enough money, eventually you decide, hey, let's make a movie starring myself as the Green Ghost, where he plays Charlie Clark, who is a car dealer, and moonlights at night as the Green Ghost as a Mexican wrestler. And actually he gets magical powers from his abuela. You know, the real abuela was dead by that point. But, you know, and somehow he manages to get real actors to show up in this thing and they make a movie starring himself and his car dealership and apparently his entire car dealership staff. I, I, I the surprising thing is we watched this movie. Crap. I don't understand. Um, so, so yeah, so this is a, a vanity product, uh, project where a car dealer made a movie starring himself with lots of people much younger than he is trying to play his contemporaries and save the world from ancient Aztec aliens. Or, I, I, the plot doesn't make any sense. Uh, other than being stitched together with all kinds of random um, Japanese, no, not Japanese, Chinese style martial arts movies, like Jackie Chan stuff. It's like, it, it, it's, it's just a little bit of everything. It, it is utter, utter crap. Um, but I don't know. I can't find myself hating it too much. I don't know. It's this weird thing. It does not deserve anything more than that. But it's just 
If there's something endearing about someone just getting you know, people into his movie like this, and I don't know. I don't give it a smirk. You do it. Don't watch it, but I'm going to give it a smirk anyway. All right. Uh, I'll go next and, and try and be brief. Green Ghost and the Master of the Stone. Uh, only redeeming quality is Danny Trejo, who plays an expert in drunken boxing. But as the Nana says, he only mastered the drunken part, uh, which is a hilarious line. One of the best. By the way, I did forget to point out one of the best scenes in the previous movie we reviewed where... The granddaughter is given a flashlight for her birthday and turns out it is also a stun yes. gun, yes. which is absolutely hilarious. Um, but back to this uh, Green Ghost movie. So Danny Trejo is the redeeming piece of this movie, um, along with a couple of fight scenes, actually. Um, but otherwise, this movie is horrible. And I'm going to give you, if, if you like bad superhero movies, okay, I'm going to give you a better one to watch. All right. This movie was trying to be something and failing miserably at it. All right. This movie is, is what Colin said. That's it. If you want to watch a better bad superhero movie, then watch the movie cross. Okay. There is a trilogy of cross movies. There's cross cross wars, cross legacy, that is a movie that happens to also star Danny Trejo. He plays a bad guy in those movies. If you want to watch a bad superhero movie, watch that one instead. You'll be much happier that you did. Uh, it's, built, it's built around Celtic mythology, by the way. Um, but this wait, one... Wait, is, wait, wait. What? Yes. Go on. Go on. Uh, so... Uh, this one is horrible. All right. Uh, special effects are straight out of a clip art 1998 mo uh, CD. Uh, the um, the acting uh, is, is poor since the lead character is the director, is the writer. Um, you know, the you know, it's just it, it's it's not good. It is a fitting tribute to the to the to the author's grandmother in that she also knew how bad of an actor and writer he was. And so she didn't expect much. She would have been thrilled that Danny Trejo played in this movie. And that's probably how he got Danny Trejo was. He said, my grandmother loved you and you once boinked her. So I could be your son. Will you please be in my movie? Uh, so anyway, I believe that is how this movie got made and Danny Trejo got talked into it. Don't watch Green Ghost and Master of the Stone uh, because Danny Trejo, I think, was in there for, uh, I don't know, maybe two days. I think they paid him a pack of cigarettes, a, a couple of I, bottles of gin, and that's it. All right, Mike, you're up. What, what's the rating? Uh, the rating is a verb. Verb. Okay. All right. All right. So there's a powerful quote that starts this movie, which got me thinking about the pyramid of education and how lessons are passed on from generation to generation. I am 100% certain that the, it's going to be all downhill from here. Um, Jack Burton is the guy's name. He has come a long way from driving the Pork Chop Express and saving the world from David Lopin. Um, the, the green Ghost, not Green Go. Okay, got it. At, uh, they have a fight scene in the parking lot, and the janitor takes his bucket and throws lightning out of a bucket. I, 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 that's the superhero I want, Janitor Man. That's who I want on my squad. And if he doesn't show up as a character in Deadpool 3, I'm going to be very upset. This, so this, this guy tries to subdue the evil woman coming after him by throwing tortillas at her. Like, like and don't be breaking Nana's tables and chairs, man. This is not the WWE, I say. Don't do it. 
Danny Trejo shows up, as, as we've already alluded, said. He's drunken master, allegedly. Dollar store drunken master, because he's only drunk. All right. Flat tire on a wheelbarrow. That ain't no joke, folks. I don't know where you grew up, but the first thing I check before I put stuff in the wheelbarrow is, is there air in the tire? You only make that mistake one time. Trust me. But it was kind of funny. He was like, okay, across the lake. He said, why do you make things complicated, fool? I didn't tell you you had to take the wheelbarrow when, when you crossed the lake. Uh, okay. So during the Kung Fu training sequence, I started to feel like this was a mini-series that somehow got spliced together into a movie or something, kind of like that version of The Saint with Elijah Dushku, where she was you know, the poolside technical geek so that they could have her working on a computer while she's wearing a bikini. I... I mean, I, look, I'm struggling to even care about this movie at this point because it's just downright comical. Like, it's making fun of itself and not even trying to make fun of itself. And then during the training montage... All right, hold on. <laughs> hold on a minute. During the training montage, I'm sitting there and I'm listening. And I'm like, wait, hold on a second. What am I hearing here? This is a Spanish version, a mariachi version of Eye of the Tiger. Y'all are lucky Mr. Shithade ain't coming in right now because how dare you? And you have, a, you have the audacity to have a running scene during the mariachi Eye of the Tiger where it's like mirroring the running scene on the beach from Rocky 3 or Rocky 4, uh, whichever, Rocky and Apollo. How dare you? I checked out after that. I Did I finish the movie? Yes, but under protest. I am giving this a verb. It was extremely formula-driven, mediocre acting, even from Danny, who was supposed to be drunk the whole time. Danny cannot act drunk. Danny needs to be drunk in order to play drunk, okay? This was not entertaining. Like, don't watch this. And damn it, if you're going to watch a bad superhero movie, Shaggy, I am very disappointed that the word Velocipaster did not come out of your mouth when you were trying to recommend something to watch instead of this. Uh, All right. If you're going to talk about bad superhero movies, just go with the cobbler. <laughs> no, we don't want to subject people to that. I mean, you know, so let's, let's not be mean. <laughs> the cobbler is not a superhero movie, okay? Did he have superpowers? No. Did he have a super sewing machine? That's not a superpower, that's a super device. Okay, well, doesn't Batman doesn't have hero. superpowers either. He has money and super I will devices. Fight you through this Do you screen, not call him a superhero? I will fight you. I will fight you. <laughs> Iron Man you doesn't talk have bad superhero movies. Yeah, Aquaman. Okay, there. I said <laughs> he it. Can, he, at I said super, it. he at least has superpowers. He can bad talk to the fishes. Movies. There you go. Yeah. Shazam. Black Adam, there. Oh, I really said it now. Black Adam, bad superhero movie. You got to go think ahead. about. Watch you gotta, that instead. You got to think about black superheroes, do you? Huh, Mike? Is that your, that your problem? Is that he's black? I got a problem with Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I, I have a couple of Under Armour shirts I, that have the Rock logo on them. I won't even wear them anymore. I take electrical tape and put the X over the the Brahma Bull. I got nothing. I don't want nothing to do with him no more. Black Adam. <laughs> I got I got Just a problem head. with Drain the Rock. Young Rock Johnson got canceled, too. and I went and I did a dance when I found out Young, young Rock got canceled. All right, so we're gonna try a new I mean, thing I, here. I, I almost forgot to say, I forgot to say when I decided to give this movie a smoke. Okay. Because I decided, okay, if there is at least a scene that I feel like is worth meaning, okay, you know, worth making a, a short clip about and sticking it on YouTube, the machete joke is that scene. Yeah, that was a good one. All right, it's time to it's time to pick new movies. For Mike has an aneurysm. 
Too late. <laughs> All right. Uh, one to 25. One to 25. What did you say? We were going to do something different. What? Uh, we'll, we'll do something different as soon as we get done with this. Okay. All right. 19. Okay. Uh, let's see if it's still available. Title is not currently available. Sorry. That was The Darkest Hour, an alien okay. invasion movie. How about number 10? Number 10. Well, this better be out there. That's not available either? Is something going on here? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we go any further... Let me let me go direct into Netflix and just make sure that the the links haven't changed. Yeah. Uh, so the darkest hour. Let's see. Darkest hour is available. Yes, that is available. Or at least darkest hour. Without the no, word the, that's not it. No, as a threat of Nazi the, invasion the, looms. No, that's not okay. it. Because the one on the suggestion seat sheet said uh, alien invasion. All right, so okay. let me. Okay, so let me look up the other one before I say no. No, okay, that's not there either. It was sabotage. I figured it would still be there because it was a Schwarzenegger movie, but all right, uh, he's got money, so he doesn't have to keep him out there. 18. Oh, you son of a bitch. Okay. <sighs> Bound to happen. Stewardess school. Pot. Really? Didn't we just watch got that? Ralph Mouth. Didn't we Stewardess watch school? Stewardess school? Did we? Please tell me. I don't know. We did not because I don't, don't remember seeing. Who's the redhead from... Happy oh, Days. Okay. Is that Ralph Mouth? Oh, then I've watched it recently. All right, great. Cool. <laughs> I have it. I I know that one then. Good. Great. All right. All right. And the next one is eight. What the hell is that? You're getting banned from this. I swear to Super Snooper. Red powder from a great red matter. Wonderful. But, you know, fantastic. Weird 80s superhero movie based off a of red matter. Great. <laughs> I hate my life sometimes, I swear to God. Oh, yeah. Okay. You, you, don't you be adding. You, sh sh you've lost privileges. Don't add any. I'm locking this sheet. It's got Ernest Borgnine in it. You're not adding. You are not, you are not adding any. <laughs> <laughs> Any more to this sheet until. All right. All right. So here we're going to add something new. So, uh, and and maybe if we if it doesn't work this time, then we'll uh, then we'll then we'll do it for next time. So, before we end the show, or while when we end the show, we will give uh, something that we learned during the show. All it's got to be is one thing that you learned during the show. So, for example, this evening I learned that Mike is going to become a cart Nazi when he retires. So, this, this I, I wish I we had gotten some kind of heads up about this because you know, no, nope, just uh, so. And I also learned that Colin might have a traveling box somewhere in Florida. Well, I learned that Shaggy's biggest concern about the addition on this house is where is he going to put the TV? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Colin, if you don't have anything, we'll uh, we'll wait for next show. But I think no, it's. A... I, I was just saying, I, I learned that uh, Shaggy's wife has uh, lots of libraries. Uh, <laughs> lots of stuff for a library. All right, there we go. So thanks, everybody, for checking out the show. Don't forget to help uh, spread the word about it. You can send everybody over to ptrradio.com to learn more about the hosts. 
the show, sign up for the podcast, as well as, uh, you know, check us out on all the social medias. Uh, like us, subscribe, etc. at PTR Radio on your favorite social network of choice. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, etc. Mike, any uh, gigs coming up? No, I have no gigs coming up at this time. That's uh, me as well. So hopefully a little bit of downtime coming up. Colin, you got any special appearances that we need to know about? All right. Well, folks, we will see you in a couple weeks. That's right. On the 26th, tentatively, we will see you next. Um, Everybody enjoy Juneteenth coming up next week, uh, you know, on the 19th. Everybody have a, until then, everybody have a good one. I'm Shaggy. I'm Colin. I'm Mike the Ape Man. Let's take a fork in this, folks. We are done. Later. Now the time has come, he's sick of playing dumb. His mind is trying.